my lovelies, it is I, Sarah the Rebel, back again for another Rebel vlog. So today I decided I wanted to talk to you all about my favorite books. Then I was like, hmm, you know, actually, all of my favorite books are fantasy novels. And then I thought, actually, all of my favorite books are high fantasy novels. So first of all, difference between high and low fantasy. Apparently there's some debate that those genre names should be changed because they don't actually help you that much, but generally high fantasy is um, fantasy that takes place totally in a, another world, whereas low fantasy maybe takes place in the real world and they eventually go to a, another world, or it's the real world but with fairies in it. Um, but most of the reading I enjoy is definitely fantasy. It takes place in another world. Uh, it generally involves a strong heroine and, at the very least, uh, a sword or two because I kind of, I kind of love swords. Anyway, I divided them up and I thought first I should talk about my guilty pleasures. Guilty pleasures are books that I'm going to recommend you read, but I'm not actually going to tell you they're good books because, to be perfectly honest, I maybe am not the best to decide whether or not they're good um, because they have something else that they mean to me and maybe that's why I like them. The first book is The Black Swan by Mercedes Lackey. Uh, look at that beautiful cover. I picked up this book solely because of the cover. I was like in middle school, I was like, oh, look how fancy she's a swan. This is so cool. It's a retelling of um, the Swan Princess story from the perspective of Odette, the daughter of the bad guy. Um, I think, no, she wasn't Odette. She's somebody else. Odile. That was her name. Anyway, um, if you haven't read any Mercedes Lackey books, you're missing out. She has this series called The Heralds of Valdemar. It's one of those series that you'll like if you like The Good Guys to Always Win. Um, it's very 80s fantasy. Uh, it's got a lot of talking animals and sword fights and the power of good triumphing over evil. It's pretty fun. A lot of Native American characters in it as well. Uh, well, Native American. Of course, they're something else because they're in a high fantasy world. But it is interesting to see. Personally, my favorite books that she's written is the Vows and Honor duology and the sequel to the Vows and Honor duology. Those follow a sword and sorcery duo, Tarma and Kethri. They're these two ladies who kick ass and they're amazing and I love them. Um, anyway, so I can't actually tell you this is a good book because I don't know. Because I, I have so much feeling and emotion behind this book, who knows if it's actually any good. I don't, but you should read it anyway. Next up is the Unicorn. Uh, so I have a bunch of Legend of the Five Rings books. I did not realize it was a game or anything like that. Um, so this is obviously based on a world uh, for an, uh, a tabletop RPG game. And uh, it's based on a world that's a blend between Korean, Japanese, and Chinese mythology all put together. So this particular one is about um, a female warrior. They're, uh, they belong to the Unicorn Clan, as you can see from her dope-ass unicorn horn. Um, and again, this is one of those book series where it's probably not very good, but it's good trashy reading, and it, you know, if you're a nerd who likes anime and stuff like that, it gives you all the things you want. Warriors, monsters, honor, blah, all that good stuff. And plenty of twists and turns to keep you interested along the way. Dragon Doom is not a bad book. This is an amazing book. You need to read Dragon Doom. This is one of my favorite love stories of all time. So why is it in my guilty pleasures? Well, because Dennis McKiernan uh, is the author of the Mythgar series. This is one of the Mythgar books. And the Mythgar series is actually based on Lord of the Rings completely. And so sometimes it's just like straight up Lord of the Rings. So some of his books, I have to say, are guilty pleasures because they're not actually groundbreaking novels, they aren't new, they're really just a retelling, a different version of The Lord of the Rings. And sometimes the way he treats female characters bothers me because I can tell he's trying to make really cool female characters and his, he doesn't always succeed. It's possible that that ha changed over time because I reread the first book from him that brought me into the series is the Hell's Crucible duology. And the female character in there is an elf named Faeus. She's a female warrior, and she's awesome. She's stoic, she's a fighter, but she also cares about people. She is a fully realized elven character, just like any other elven character, except she happens to be a female. And so that was my introduction into the world of the Mythgar novels. Um, so along the way, I've read them all, I own them all, and some of them treat females better than others. This is one that does an amazing job. The female character is Ellen. She is a warrior maiden of the North, and oh, it's so good, it's so good. 
Anyway, they fight a dragon. Just please, get Dragon Doom, or read it. So, moving on to young adult novels. I realized, uh, I don't have them all here, there's probably more I would recommend, but I realized most of the books I enjoy are young adult novels from previous times, not like current young adult novels. Um, I'm not really sure if that's the nostalgia factor or what, oh, book down, book down. Um, but for some reason, that's just what floats my boat. The Woman Who Loved Reindeer by Meredith Ann Pierce. I don't know why this is the YA novel. <laughs> this is about a woman raising a baby, then falling in love with that baby, but that baby is also a reindeer. If that doesn't intrigue you enough to read the book, just, I don't know what else to tell you. Go read it. She is not to be confused. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. She has another series that I really love called, um, what is the actual series called? The Dark Angel Trilogy. And this one happens to be the Pearl of the Soul of the World. It is about the moon. Oddly enough. Oh no, I probably shouldn't have spoiled that. Well, they never actually say in the book that it's the moon, but it's basically the moon in the future. Um, and it's beautiful and gorgeous, and it's just written like poetry. It's so good. Um, but we have a strong female character. We have her falling in love with a very conflicted and kind of damselly in distress after he's done being a vampire. Um, love interest and her best friend, of course, best friend trope is black. Uh, they, I want them to make a movie of this so bad, but I feel like they would get everybody's race wrong, so I almost don't want them to do it. Um, so it's a little tropey in the best friend being black thing, but she is a really great character, so I forgive her, and uh, this is just fantasy at its best. Just a creative, inventive world. Full of monsters, too. Um, Patricia C. Reed's dragon series. It's like calling on dragons, talking to dragons, enchanting dragons. If you like dragons and castles and princesses, but you also want people to be way more badass than they normally are, this is a series I highly recommend. And if you have kids that you want to fall in love with fantasy, I highly recommend this series. It's so good. Everybody is just... It, it's, it almost is a satire on fantasy in some ways, but in a very loving kind of way. It turns a lot of conventions on its head, um, and it's it's very matter-of-fact. Like, oh, I want my prince! Someone else will be like, why? Why don't you get a job? Like, it's it's just that kind of novel, and they're my favorite. I love them all. Um, Hero Song by Edith Patel. This was supposed to be a Chronicles book, but she only wrote two, Hero Song and Fire Arrow. Fire Arrow I love even more than Hero Song, probably because it's a female lead. Um, but this is based on Celtic mythology. This boy has to go off and kill a worm. That's like a big poisonous magical creature. Um, and so it's just good old fashioned, gather your party, go on an adventure, buildings Roman. Um, I recommend Fire Arrow even more than this one because it's, it's about a girl who's lost her family and is trying to reclaim things and figure out what happened to her family and she's a badass fighter. It's so good. And finally, my favorite childhood book of all time, The Song of the Lion is Quartet. Well, books, not book. I recommend anything by Tamora Pierce, honestly. I love all of her books, especially the Tortal books. Her latest one, you could tell she'd gotten sick and she had to hurry up and finish it while not feeling well, and it really shows in that book. That book was very, like, mm -hmm, you just threw all this together at the end. But this is the one that started it all. Now, in college, my English professor, professor told me that she didn't, Tamora Pierce doesn't write well, that these books are just bad books. And I was like, what? No, explain to me. And she's like, they're just, they're just poorly written. I've reread them multiple times trying to figure out if I'm just biased. I love these books. I think she's wrong. Sorry, girl. I love you, though. Um, this is a story of Alana, who is a girl who disguises herself as her twin brother in order to become a knight. Because her brother wants to become a mage, and he doesn't want to become a knight. And, you know... She's just got to make that happen. So anyway, she does that. She turns into the most badass knight of all time and eventually becomes king's champion. And that's not spoiling anything because you already know she's going to succeed in her destiny because she's Alana the Lioness. Um, it was really cool as a child to see a female protagonist that was everything I wanted. I wanted her to have red hair. I wanted her to have purple eyes. I wanted her to be a fighter, to be a swordsman, to work hard, to have a bad temper, to be short. Basically, the personification of me. 
So this is definitely one of my favorite books of all time. And in fact, my novel that I'm working on, the main character has um, red hair and purple eyes. Not because I read this, I'd already decided that's what I wanted her to look like before I'd ever read um, The Song of the Lioness, but I decided to keep it that way as an homage to Tamar Pierce because she's just the best. Those were my young adult novels. On to, well, that leads us in perfectly. Uh, as I mentioned before, my favorite fantasy books are the ones with strong female characters, and especially more so with um, female characters of color. Um, but we'll get to that. Dagger Spell by Catherine Kerr is one of my favorite books with a strong female protagonist. Um, these are, this is part of her Novels of Devery series. The series is basically a Celtic fantasy world with elves and centaurs, um, based, and the whole premise is reincarnation. Basically, this one guy made a mistake a long time ago, swore to never rest until he fixed his mistake, so he has to go through and try to find the people that he effed over in their new reincarnated forms, and they, all these different people reincarnate over and over and over again. So it's these intertwined stories that usually take place in the past and in the future and in the present, I'm sorry, usually in the past and in the present. Um, I don't think she ever goes into the future stuff. Um, but it's just so interesting how the stories are interwoven and it's very dark at times. It, if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, this is probably more your speed than a lot of other books I'll recommend. Um, because it, people die, life isn't fair, horrible things happen, mothers sometimes get that post, uh, what is it, um, postpartum disorder where they don't like their kids. I mean, it's just crazy dark stuff in here. Well, not crazy dark, not Game of Thrones dark, but dark enough that some of the novels I don't love as much as the other ones, but this is the one I started with, this is the one I love the most because the main character is Jill, and she is a sword fighter, but she is reincarnated, a uh, reincarnation of somebody much more important in the past, and she wasn't meant to become a sword fighter, she was meant for much bigger things, but I'll let you read the book to find all of that out. Then we have The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. Um, Felicia Day actually recommended this in her Vaginal Fantasy podcast, so I picked it up because it sounded intriguing. Um, author is a person of color, main character is a person of color, and basically the story is that this um, girl who is related, to, kind of like a, a half-breed like me, um, to the ruling family, and they bring her in to compete to become the next ruler. It's complicated because so much happens. Uh, and in the meanwhile, there are gods and goddesses chained up and serving the ruling family. The ruling family is sick, horrible, twisted people. And it's a lot of intrigue, a lot of romance, a lot of uh, triumph over over the forces that ail you. But it also is a very weird book. Um, and, and the ending may not be satisfactory to some people, but I feel like if you read the, the second two novels that come after, the ending makes a lot of sense and you'll be fine with it. So just shut up and read it. The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. Oh, by uh, N.K. Jemison. The Iron Dragon's Daughter. This is probably the least like any of the other books I've recommended to you. Um, this one is, it, while being set in a high fantasy world, is has like low fantasy tendencies in that it's in a high fantasy world, but they go to high school and they do maybe do drugs and they become fighter pilots. It's very weird, very strange almost drug-hazed world. Um, again, pretty dark. This girl discovers a dragon and makes it work for her. Um, and it's sad and beautiful, and I love it. And there's a sequel. I didn't love it quite so much, because it was a lot less dark in a lot of ways. Anyway, I read this in middle school, and I was definitely way too young to read it in middle school, because I was like, oh, word, that's what penises look like? Anyway, it's a long story. Um, <laughs> but I hope was this supposed to be a YA novel? I still don't even know. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. I recommend The Iron Dragon's Daughter if you like elements of realness in your fantasy. So probably like Harry Potter fans would probably like The Iron Dragon's Daughter. Though it is not as happy as Harry Potter. Oh, which one to do? Because I love them both so much. All right, we'll do Kate. Oh, did I say who wrote it? Sorry, Michael Swanwick wrote this one. Kate Elliott's Crown of Stars series. Um, starring a female protagonist of color. It's medieval Europe. Uh, this is definitely Game of Thrones-esque in that 
uh, the plots are horribly intricate. Intricate. I can't say intricate. That's embarrassing. The plots are terribly intricate. Um, it's a lot of intrigue. A lot of bad things happen to people. People die all the damn time. Characters you love are just gonna die. Uh, yeah, this is probably more like Game of Thrones than whatever the other book I suggested is. Uh, but it's really awesome for people who uh, like, well, not just medieval history, but also elements of um, spiritualism, like meditation and um, things like that. It, it's just really cool, really deep. It's got different dimensions. It has other protagonists besides Lyoth that you'll follow. Baby boy, you can't sit on my lap while I'm doing a video. It's very rude. Anyway, highly recommend it. It's a, a long series, but it's worth it. Uh, and actually lots of people of color in it, um, including people obviously based on um, the Mayans. Um, and there's it doesn't just have people of color and it's okay. Like People are a little prejudiced against people that don't look like them, which I also, I always enjoy seeing those um, reactions and seeing how characters deal with that because it's, you know, something we deal with in the real world. So, Kate Elliott, Crown of Star series. And last but not least for this category, um, the Dark Jewels trilogy, or is it the Black Jewels trilogy? The Black Jewels trilogy and all of her other books in this world. Wow, look how well, how much I read this. It's just torn up. Anyway, story is of a girl who is destined to become the witch to rule everything. So, let me tell you why this is different from all the other ones. This one takes place in a dark world where a lot of conventions are twisted on their heads. So witches are good, not bad. Well, some witches are bad, some witches are good. The word witch does not have a negative connotation. People are either witches or priestesses, um, males are warlords or warlord princes, um, you could be a healer or a black widow or queen. Um, there are this hierarchy, you have jewels that tell how strong your magic is, and um, it's a very strict hierarchical society, I don't know if I said that word right, um, based on that, and women are actually in positions of power. Uh, it is also about two brothers and a father, so it's really about four people, and it's dark and delicious and sensuous and erotic and harrowing. Horrible things happen to good people, but amazing things happen to good people. Um, and it, it's just such an interesting world because everything that we're used to being evil is not evil. You know, the the demon with the wing. In fact, characters are named Damon and Lucifer and Satan. Um, so, highly recommend Black Jewels Trilogy if you like dark stuff, if you like to see convention turned on its head. Definitely read this one. And also, I don't know, it's just, I love the idea in that series of the fact that women are strong and we're powerful and we're meant to be leaders, but we also have these terrible tempers and so we shouldn't be allowed to fight, so men should kind of protect us both from ourselves and from other people for the sake of the world, not because we need to be protected. Um, it's it's just all interesting and intriguing as a as a thought experiment. I love it. So finally, on to epics. Mostly left out epic fantasies um, here. Most of these are single book epics, except for one. So you know what? I'll do that one first since it doesn't fit with the rest. But of course, with other ones that I would recommend, you know, Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, if you're on the younger side, definitely. There are some books in there I like more than others. Um, the Song of Fire and Ice, and of course Lord of the Rings. Steve Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen novels are just the greatest things ever in existence. Um, he gets worse as he goes. He does. He has this thing where women are equal and women are just as able to be fighters as men, but then later on rape becomes like something he comes back to over and over again. I don't really like that, even though he does have male rape, which is acknowledged as male rape, and I did appreciate that. I think he got a little worse towards the end as far as doing things that annoyed me. Oh, my cat's talking. Is he going to ruin my blog? Um, and also, he has a very deep, deep, like, millions years old mythology that the characters know, but despite this, he doesn't really have strong female fighters in the mythology and as the folk heroes. So you can tell that, you know, he's... He's trying really hard to be feminist. He almost makes it. The other thing I really love about this series is almost everyone is a person of color. Very few white people just come from like one little island. There's Japanese people, there's Chinese people, there's black people, there's Arabic people, every kind of people. Um, but they're they're not 
called that, of course, they're from their different places, but you can tell from the descriptions who they're based on. And all of the main characters, except for one or two, are people of color. Um, you know, the emperor is a black man. It, it's just really nice to read that for a change and to to have a fantasy world peopled with all different races is really nice. And a nice change from that whole oh, western castles and, and riding on my horse and going tilting and all that stuff. Very dark, very gritty. If you like Game of Thrones, this is definitely for you. Very twisted, very complicated. Um, and again, everyone you love will die. So, highly recommend it. The rest of these are standalone single novels. The Firebringer. This is about a deer. It's about a deer. It's by David Clement Davies, and it's a deer who brings fire to the herd, and he has to rescue the herd from an evil herd leader. Listen, it's a great book. I don't know what else to tell you, except you should read The Firebringer. It's amazing, and it's about deer. <laughs> Uh, Tagana and the Lions of Arrasan, both by Guy Gabriel K. Okay. This one is actually we named a cat after it. It's about a land who's been so destroyed completely nobody even remembers the name, and a few people from that land trying to make their way in the world. Some of them are rebelling and trying to take the land back. One of them has kind of been seduced by the man who destroyed their home and is living in luxury and maybe hating herself. It's it's a lot of great intrigue, it's it's many different um, perspectives, and it's just dark and lovely and just a well-told tale. The Lines of Al-Rasan is based on, um, oh, what is that place in Spain? Why did I just blank on the name? I know this name, I'm so mad at myself right now. Alambre, there we go. Uh, it's based on the period of time in Spain where the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians were all kind of living together and right before things got really shitty when the North African Muslims, uh, the more extreme uh, Islamists, invaded and just started killing the crap out of everybody. Um, and this was after I think they defeated the, Christ the extreme Christians who were killing the crap out of everybody. So it's uh, a nice little look of fanti fantasy look at that time period and what maybe people were interacting with each other and thinking and doing but it's a completely fantastical setting there are not Jews or Christians or Muslims it's these different religions um, and I really enjoyed it although I did have a Muslim friend who said he felt like it was unfair to Muslims um, as someone who's not Muslim I guess I wouldn't be as I wouldn't notice these things as much so beware if you are actually Muslim you may not like this book as much um, I thought it did a good job of showing that every religion had its flaws, um, but then again, mm, probably biased. Uh, but check it out. I love it. Um, they, I think they were going to make a movie about it, or they made a movie. I was very nervous about the idea of the movie. And last but not least, the book I tell you guys about all the time, Ugh. The Redemption of Alphalus, another wonderfully self-contained little story. It's about a guy who's a thief, and he tries to rob the wrong place, and a goddess is there, and she's like, Yo, homie, I'm about to use you for some crazy shit. And so he goes off on these adventures and gathers up a team needed to do something very specific. And I won't tell you anything else other than that. It is a great uh, story if you like romance and fantasy. But not too much romance. Way more fantasy and adventure than romance, but definitely you would enjoy it more if you like romance. Alright, so those are my favorite books. I hope you enjoyed my favorite fantasy books. Maybe that's all I like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you pick up some of them. Go to your library. Almost all of them are available in the library because they're older books. Thanks for watching, and I'll have another vlog next week. Bye!